Wedges are used to adjust the elevation or provide stability for heavy objects such as this large steel pipe. We will determine the force required to pull the wedge out. Belt drives are commonly used for transmitting the torque developed by a motor to a wheel attached to a pump, fan or blower. In this lesson we will learn if the belts will function properly such as without slipping or breaking. A wedge is a simple machine in which a small force P is used to lift a large wedge W. To determine the force required to push the wedge in or out, it is necessary to draw a free body diagram of the wedge and the object on top of it. It is easier to start with free body diagram of the wedge since you know the direction of its motion. Note that the friction forces are always in the direction opposite to the motion or impending motion of the wedge. The friction forces are along the contacting surfaces and the normal forces are perpendicular to the contacting surfaces. Next, a free body diagram of the object on top of the wedge is drawn. Please note that at the contacting surfaces between the wedge and the object, the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to those on the wedge and all other forces acting on the object should be shown. To determine the unknowns, we must apply equation of equilibrium to the wedge and the object as well as the impending motion friction equation. Now of the two free body diagrams, which one should we start analyzing first? We should start analyzing the free body diagram in which the number of unknowns are less than or equal to the number of equation of equilibrium and frictional equations. Note that if the object is to be lowered, then the wedge needs to be pulled out. If the value of the force P needed to remove the wedge is positive, then the wedge is self-locking, such as it will not come out on its own. Consider a flat belt passing over a fixed curved surface with the total angle of contact equal to beta radians. If the belt slips or is just about to slip, then T2 must be larger than T1 and the motion resisting friction forces. Hence T2 must be greater than T1. Detailed analysis shows this relationship between T1 and T2 where mu is the coefficient of static friction between the belt and the surface. Be sure to use radians when using this formula. Considering this example, the crate weighs 300 pounds and coefficient of static friction at all contacting surfaces is 0.3, assuming the wedges have negligible weight. It is required to find the smallest force P needed to pull out the wedge. To find the solution, first we draw a free body diagram of the crate, then draw a free body diagram of the wedge, apply equation of equilibrium to the crate, and then apply to wedge. The free body diagram of crate and wedge are shown in these figures. Applying the equation of equilibrium to the crate in the x and y direction, solving these two equations simultaneously, it yields NB equal to 82.6 pounds and NC equal to 275.3 pounds. Applying the equation of equilibrium to the edge, first in the y direction, we get ND equal to 264 pounds, and then in the x direction, it results P equal to 90.7 pounds. This example concludes here. Thanks for watching.